Okay, and here's a quick tutorial on how to use a sprite to create a sprite atlas and a sprite sheet for animation. Uh, so over here we have the menu um, and a bunch of information. Uh, we're going to go to File and New. Uh, over here you can type in the size. Um, if you're going to make a sprite atlas, uh, um, I guess 1024 might work uh, by 1024. You could try 512 by 512 depending on the size or 2048 if you're looking for a larger size. Uh, we have RGB which is going to give you some colors. Grayscale is gray and index is, um, I guess, as it says, 8 bits per pixel. Um, but RGB will give you more colors so it's 32 bits. So I'm going to click on that one transparent background so I can kind of see what's transparent. I don't necessarily want the white or black because uh, I want to keep my um, character and stuff clear in the background. So I'll press OK with those settings. That creates a large 1024 canvas. Right now we're sitting at 100% down here. I can zoom out with the scroll wheel so I can see the whole image here. Um, if I want to pan and move this around instead of just scrolling out, if I hold the space bar, and use the left mouse button. You can see holding spacebar turns this into a hand. Left mouse button will allow me to move the screen around. Uh, this way I can zoom in and move uh, to different sections of the drawing. So scroll wheel and spacebar and left mouse can do those options. All right, and it has pretty much the same shortcuts as Photoshop, so if you're familiar with those shortcuts or not. Um, all right, so let's jump over to the pencil tool. Uh, if you click on the pencil tool, um, there's two options for a spray brush, a spray tool also, but just clicking on the pencil by itself will give you the pencil. Um, over here we have the pixel size. Uh, so if right now we're at two pixels. If I were to draw two pixels, um, you can see that it's a, a very thin line, a very uh, small. If I control Z, that's undo, um, I can pick this at a much higher number. If I click it, I can either type a number or drag on this to pick different sizes. So let's try 12, now let's draw with that. You can see it makes a much larger line, but it's also very um, very light. Uh, so let's pick a darker color. So Control Z is undo, um, let's say black right here. And now when I try drawing, it's a much darker line. Uh, so these are gonna be your colors in this area. If I wanted to go with red, I can draw a red line. If I wanted to change the brush size larger, I can pick a large number. And you can see that's how the drawing uh, works. Um, if you want to erase things, the eraser tool is right here. So if I click on this guy, I can erase. Uh, right now it's set to one pixel, uh, so it's going to take a little while. Or I can click this and make the eraser much larger and erase more. Or just make a really large eraser and just kind of erase the whole line at once. So let's clear off the rest of this. All right, so we have um, how that works. Um, also of note, that you have opacity over here. So if I go back to, let's say, the pencil tool, and I were to draw... Um, some red right there, and then I, I can zoom in also uh, with the scroll wheel and pan so I can move the drawing over using that space bar technique so I can kind of center it on the screen. If I go to the eraser now, with this set at opacity of 255, it's max intensity. Let's up down the brush size, so max opacity will go right through the whole thing. But control Z to undo. Um, undo is also gonna be right here, the undo command, it's control Z is the shortcut. Um, let's click off of that. Uh, if I change the opacity right here to let's say half value around 100 or some, uh, you notice that it didn't fully erase it. If I do a second time, it starts to erase a little more, and the more I do it, uh, the more it erases. So it's kind of like doing it in stages. You're not getting a full 100% wipe, you're getting a, a slight pressure in a way. Uh, if I set this to something really low, it's going to take a lot longer for that red to disappear. But if I set this to a really high number, like 255, it'll erase off nice and clean at once. So you can have different opacities. Uh, the pencil also has opacity. Um, oops, wipe that off. If I take the pencil, um, it's not up here. It's going to be down here where you have your color pickers. You can either pick your colors in this section where the kind of pre-picked colors, or down here we're going to get a lot more choices of colors. You can see that right here um, that area is showing you all the different colors that you're picking from. Um, or you can click on this guy right here. By clicking on this guy, you have a few different options. So you have that same color spectrum as seen up here. Uh, you also have RGB colors, so you can pick um, mix kind of your ratios. Uh, HSB, where you can kind of pick from the rainbow of colors. And this is your saturation, so the higher on this side, the more color you get. Over this way, you get more of a black and white image. 
Um, over here you're going to have the, um, the I guess the white and black, so you're going to get a very white color. And over here you're going to get a very black color. So you're adding blacks and whites. Here is color and no color. Here's all the colors you can pick from. And A is for alpha. So this is going to be your how, um, how kind of like the eraser, how much you're putting on there. So if I have a full 255, you can see it makes a nice bright red. But if I change that alpha down where it says 255 now, I put it at like half value 121 and I draw. You can see the transparency through the checker pattern that this is a half transparent um, color. If I do another pass at it, you can see that it overlaps and makes it a little darker in the center. Um, and more times I go over it, it'll eventually it'll build up to that the 255 max opacity. So if you want to do some blending, uh, you could paint down some layers, switch out to let's say um, a darker a red color. And let's drop the brush size down a little more. And so now I can start painting this. Um, and the more I put down, the darker the shade's going to get. So you can start getting some blending in there or drop the opacity or the alpha opacity down a little more and so now you can blend it a little more. So you can kind of get some gradients in there. Uh, it doesn't quite blur it together. You still get those pixelated edges. Um, I think the there should be a blur tool somewhere here. Uh, there it is, blur tool. Uh, so by doing this you can blend those colors together. You can see that it uh, the difference is uh, where it's kind of all these pixelated edges, now you have an, a nice smooth um, uh, color. So it blends it as well as it can. If you just keep brushing over top, it will keep blending your colors. So if you want to go pixel for pixel and design old classic characters that way, or have kind of a more modern um, gradient to your uh, artwork, uh, either option works. So that would be the blur tool right there. Um, if you want to, let's say, zoom out some, um, and if you want to move something, you can click on the move tool right here. If you click move, uh, you can move your entire drawing. So that's the move tool. Let's zoom out a little more. Um, if you want to move a section of a drawing, you can keep, grab this marquee right here. So if I click on the marquee, you have a couple different options also. But just the square marquee for regular. I can grab a section and then I can move that section. Um, or I can use a different tool, let's say I use it like the lasso tool. The lasso tool means you can draw where you want that, and I can grab different areas depending on how I lasso. Um, so a quick application of how this would work, uh, to deselect this if you don't want this, is Control D on the keyboard, so deselect Control D. Uh, if I have a person, let's say his head's right here, let's push up that opacity again. Uh, all right, so if his head's right here and his body's right here, and I realize, oh no, the head's probably not in the right place, I want to lower it. I can use the lasso, grab that, and then move his head a little bit lower, and then Control D to deselect. So I, I can move different things around if I need to. All right, so that's lasso, brush, erase, uh, zoom. We're just going to use the scroll wheel. It's easier that way. Move if you want to move entire things, or you can select it first. Uh, paint bucket. If I click on the paint bucket, I can pick, let's say, a blue color. And paint bucket will fill in everything that's contained. So you can quickly draw a shape and then bucket fill. But if you don't have anything like you painted here, it'll leak out everywhere and cover everything because there was no closing gaps like this one had to seal it in there. Um, so let's control Z that to undo. We have a line tool right here. You can draw different lines if you want lines. Um, I'm going to change the pixels a little bit thicker so you can kind of see more of a consistent stroke um, or even thicker. So line tool, you have the square tool also if you want to make squares. Um, again, if you make the pixels bigger, it'd be easier to see, but I'm so far zoomed out, it kind of patches it like that. And that covers most of the tools right here. Um, so for the main sprite sheet, uh, the idea is to fill in um, different sections. So let's go grab the black and up the line 11 is fine. So you would draw, let's say, a house right here, and you would put a tree right here. And let's say you wanted a pot or whatever, or a bucket or something you're going to have there. Or let's say you wanted a chair, uh, put the chair in kind of a perspective looking orientation maybe. Um, so you draw all your different shapes. And once you have these, this sprite atlas done, oops, uh, you would save this out. And in the game engine, you would just select which one you want. And you would just drop it in your game, cut and paste kind of thing. 
Uh, so once you're once you're done drawing your sprite atlas, everything's on here, happy, colored, and everything. Uh, you go over to File, uh, Save As, and Save As. You have lots of different. Um, uh, so I've already saved that. Lots of different formats down here. If I click on this, um, the A sprite right here is going to be the file um, that this program uses. So you can always go back and reuse your layers, which I'll cover next. Um, so uh, this is going to be your default A sprite. Uh, I'll call this um, demo. Cool. But the demo, uh, this uh, A sprite file format, will only be read in A sprite. We want to export this in a way that. Um, we can use uh, with the export board only the spreadsheet. So we're just going to save as and pick a PNG. So the PNG format will go into the game engine. We'll be using Unity for this one. So the PNG format will preserve the transparent backgrounds. So we want to keep that. Uh, so PNG uh, can be read by other software. The A sprite format, where it says A sprite, was only readable in this software. So uh, use A sprite first so you can keep your layers intact but PNG to put into the game engine. Oh, and over here is your preview, so you can see actual size. Um, you can kind of pan and look through and see what is actual size, even though we're zoomed out right here. This is actual uh, preview size. All right, and you can zoom out on that also. All right, so let's uh, make a new one. So file, new, and we're gonna make a character now. So let's go 64 by 64. We'll call that a decent size character. RGB for color, transparent background, press OK. All right, so let's go to the brush tool. B for brush is the same thing. E for erase also, just like Photoshop. Um, pixel size can be much smaller now. Let's try four. Oops. Uh, four. And let's zoom back out. All right, so four is probably still too big. Uh, 64 pixels, we should probably use something smaller. So let's try one. Okay, cool. So if we're going to draw a character, let's say, and he's going to walk, uh, we'll put the head right here, we'll put the body right here, yeah, let's make the body a little smaller, and the hips, and we'll start with the legs in the outwards position. So he's walking um, like so. And we can do some, uh, sketch it out kind of quickly, and then we'll go through, and, or you could go through and do another layer of cleanup. So what that basically means is you have this character here, um, we'll go over here where it says um, layer, and that's where we're going to add a layer to. If you don't have this view part port down there, it's going to be called your timeline. Um, so if you don't see that, that's where that is. It's under view timeline. Um, if you want to add a layer, so layer, you can say new layer, and you can rename these if you want to. Clicking on it will double clicking will allow you to rename things. Um, so layer two, I could say, let's go to blue ish purple. Um, so we have this layer right here, and then this will be the final layer. So I spend a little more time and make it a little more cleaner. Um, put the shapes in there, put, let's say the belt, and then his front leg coming down here, and the back leg. And so you do everything clean, and you can turn off with this eyeball, uh, turn off the previous layer, and you can see we have a much cleaner layer. So we sketched it out really fast on the first layer, turned it off, and now we have a clean layer. So it's much easier to work with layers. Just quickly scribble out what you want, and then go through and clean it afterwards. Don't start trying to draw every detail and realize that it's not proportional. So I can turn off uh, the blue one, turn back on the real original sketch layer. Um, and now if I want to create the animation moving, let's go back to the black color, and we need a new keyframe. So we'll go to frame, and we'll do either new frame or new empty frame. In this case, I want a new empty frame because I don't want to repeat the same drawing. So new frame will repeat the existing drawing, but new empty frame will make a blank one. Um, so if I click on, let's say, layer one, which is the eyeball open, if I'm on the wrong layer and the eyes closed, it's going to give me a, you can't draw because you're on a layer that's closed or turned off. So click on the layer that's on and you should be able to draw just fine. But the, the tricky part is we don't know where the previous character was, so we can kind of guess where he is or control Z, turn that off. Uh, we can click on what's called the onion skin. Uh, right now it's disabled, but if I click this on, it shows you the previous image so you know where the previous drawing was. You can see it's kind of grayed out. Uh, so let's redraw this. Uh, we'll draw the head, we'll draw the body, uh, the hips again, and this time the first leg is now moved over to the kind of standing up position, and the other leg is passing across. 
So we'll draw kind of like the leg and transition from one state uh, to the other. So now if you want to kind of scroll through, you can drag these numbers back and forth. So click and drag and you can see that he's transitioning back and forth. Or you can press the play button right here and the play button will play it. It's kind of disorienting with the onion skin still turned on. So let's press stop, turn off the onion skin and press play again. And so now we don't have that onion skin effect. Um, in this case, if the walk cycle is looking a little too fast, uh, you can slow it down. So let's go insert another frame. So I'll go back to frame one, frame, and let's add a new frame. So the new frame will repeat the previous one, so nothing's changing, uh, so it drags out the timeline a little bit longer. Um, yeah, that should work. Uh, so let's go add one more to the end, so I'll click on frame three file, add a new frame so it has it holds on this drawing a little bit longer and if I press play now he's walking a lot slower because we have more frames. Um, you can also do more uh, clean uh, transitions between things if you want. Um, so let's say if you want to get super elaborate uh, the difference between this one and this one, let's clear out this one. Um, the backspace button will clear out the frame for you so you can erase it, turn on the onion skin. Uh, right here you can see these these little corner brackets this determines how much onion skin you're going to see if you slide those little brackets around. Um, so going back to here, so I can kind of see it's kind of jumbled up there, but I have an idea of what was where. So if I draw the head here, the body, and then the transition between the foot was here, and now it's going to be moving to here. So let's draw part way. So he's kind of bending his legs a little bit, and this foot is still trailing on the ground but coming up forwards uh, so we're kind of moving to that position. So if I go through this now turn off onion skin you can kind of see that there's a little more flow with the character instead of just clicking back and forth between uh, two big extremes. So If I press play you can see the first step is a little more fluid so the more frames you add with more unique drawings you're going to get a better clarity in terms of your animation. Uh, once you're happy with how the sprite turns out, I'm assuming you draw arms and all that stuff later. Um, once you're happy with all this and colored it and everything, uh, we're, we want to export this. If we go to File, um, we do Save As, and let's call it um, an A sprite. This way we can go back and edit it later. So let's call this Demo Walk. Okay. And so that saves this format where we have all the layer, all the layers, all the frames, all the A sprite format that we're using is now contained in that A sprite file. But the A sprite won't go into the game engine, so we need to save again. Uh, in this case, we want to export. Um, we want to export the sprite. Or actually, you can save. We'll do. Okay, we'll export first. We want to put this in the game engine, so export sprite sheet. Um, so we could do horizontal strip, we could do vertical, matrix, so I'm going to leave it horizontal. Visible layers is fine, we don't need to see the uh, one that's turned off the, the um, other layer. We're going to do all the frames, and we're going to save as a demo walking. Um, PNG format is fine. If you want to click on this, you can make some other set setting changes, but that should work just fine. Uh, then we're going to go press export, and that spits it out. So now let's go find out where that ended up. Um, I should have it right here. All right, so it exported out all the different frames. It um, has a transparent background, so you can't see any of the white border behind it, and you have this sequence of uh, frames. So when we put this in the game engine, it'll cut out each square separate, and it'll put it into a playable animation format. If you wanted to see the playable animation format, which is what we'll be turning in for homework, so you'll need this for the game engine uh, moving into next week, but um, jump back to A sprite in order to actually see it in, uh, in moving motion. Uh, let's go to File, Save As, and instead of doing an A sprite format, we're going to do a GIF or GIF format. Uh, this will preserve the animation. It won't let you go back and do your layers and all that stuff, but at least it'll, we'll be able to see a visible motion object. So demo walk. Um, okay. And it's going to warn you. Um, this uh, doesn't support layers. You're not going to be able to keep this, but that's fine. We already saved it as an A sprite format. This is just so we can see the animation. Um, it won't erase anything. It's just letting you know that this format won't preserve that. Uh, you could also use um, 
ASC if you want to keep that as well. All right, so let's continue anyway, yes. Um, and yes, we want to loop the animation so it keeps looping. We don't want it to play just once. So press OK, and cool. Um, let's go find that. Uh, let's see, it should be right here. If I double click on this guy, uh, kind of small. <laughs> let's pull that over here. Um, so here's our character. Uh, we have him uh, pretty, pretty small, but let's, let's zoom in. So if you control plus a lot of times. Uh, here is a, it plays an Internet Explorer, so you can see this. You can also open QuickTime if you want to kind of see how that looks. Um, and that's how the, uh, we'll turn the format in, is the, uh, the GIF format. So jumping back to A-Sprite, that should pretty much cover how everything works. So we covered how to do the, um, the Sprite Atlas. You draw whatever you want, save that as a PNG. We have the GIF format, just so we can see the playable animation. We've covered layers and how to draw your different frames. And we want to keep this as a sprite sheet for exporting um, so we can see that at the end or put that in the game engine. And that should cover how to use a sprite.